The question of Banyarwanda, the, I know that uh, Ugandans of Rwanda of of and origin, like there are Ugandans of uh, Sudanese origin, the Ugandans of Congolese origin, there's some uh, these Mumia, Mumas, these Milton Mumas. <laughs> I'm not very sure. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know. No, but you don't have to, to worry because Uganda accepts a dual nationality. So there was a time when we had a, a minister in Uganda's country, and his blood brother was vice president of Kenya. So these things happen. Uh, now there are. What I know is that Rwanda was added to Uganda in 1910. The was part of Rwanda, which was ceded to Uganda in 1910, and these people of Rwanda became Ugandans. Then the border between South and Kore and Mutara in Rwanda was, has been very fluid. There are, there are very few Wanyangore who don't have that kind of relationship with the Wanyarwanda, although we are not exactly very friendly. <laughs> I have had these, uh, these challenges of people who say, no, we are no longer Wanyarwanda, we are now our Vandimwe. Our Vandimwe in Kinyarwanda means people who come from the same womb. Now, the, the Wanyarwanda is people who are born in Rwanda. So, but uh, there are people who call themselves Wanyarwanda or Uganda origin. And I don't see why anybody who can verify their ancestry should be denied a passport. Anybody, I fail to understand why anybody who can verify their ancestry should be denied a passport. What I know is that there are incidents because we speak the same language. The, there are Banyarwanda who speak Runyangore, there are Nuchiga, there are Chika who speak Nyarwanda, uh, like there are Banande who speak in Chikonjo, there are, there are attorneys in South Sudan. You know, they speak the same language with my friend uh, Henry uh, uh, Okero. Now, when they come, and sometimes they, you find uh, General Wilu shares the same grandfather with Musanyufu. Musanyufu is, uh, is a little student in Kenya, uh, Wilu is a little student in Uganda, but the stock is the same. So if I say I'm so, son of so and so, uh, and my grandfather is so and so, uh, who happens to be General's grandfather, it becomes difficult for the, the Department of Citizenship to know whether I'm an so from Kenya or an so from Uganda. That's, that's what has been happening with the Banyarwanda. The, there are these ones in Namtamba, those who came before 1926, who have been in Namtamba for a long time, those qualified to be Ugandans. But then there are these ones at the border, like in Katuna, there is a man who has Katuna. There is a man who has two wives. One wife is in Rwanda, or the other one is in Uganda. Now, what are the children? So, so, so these are cases you find like at the Mpongwe, Rubiria. This side of Rubiria, Rubiria River, he, a man has a wife. The other side in the Congo, the man has a wife. Now, what do you do? So sometimes it becomes difficult for immigration officers to be very sure that this person who is applying, especially if they're from the border, or, you know, is, it becomes difficult. Then, on other occasions, they have issued passports only to find that the, the applicant already has a, a Rwandese passport. You find somebody has two passports, a Ugandan passport and a Rwandese passport, a Ugandan ID card and a Rwandese ID card. Like the Kenyans, very many Kenyans have our national ID cards, and uh, some of our people also seem to reciprocate. I <laughs> now, now you can see the, the owner of <laughs> getting excited. So I promise to you, yes, we are promising you that all of these people who have doubt, whose, who have doubted, doubtable ancestry, shall be thoroughly investigated, but no deserving citizen will be denied a pass. Be a a a It's not particular to Banyarwanda, no. All those people who come from the 
Bodas. You see our borders, Madam Chairperson, were determined arbitrarily. Our borders were determined arbitrarily. They were determined in Berlin. None of our grand grandfathers were there. That's why me, I'm a Pan-African, and I don't believe, I don't seriously believe in uh, being a Ugandan. I believe in being an African from the Africa province of East Africa and homeland of Uganda. I thank you. <laughs> of verification to do, the last I heard of Congolese, I think was around 1998-99, when our forces came back from Congo, and there were very many wives that came. So I do not know whether now this is a new group, but we shall investigate. We shall take it up, Honorable Minister. Uh, are they, they come as well? Uh, <laughs> Others are dancers. <laughs> yeah, but you see, Madam Chairperson, you know, this is, these are problems of Africa. You know, people don't appreciate Uganda until you go out of Uganda. <laughs> these are problems of Africa. We have to learn. I can't go beyond that, but these are problems of Africa. You know, <laughs> these fellows, <laughs> you can, it's not us alone. You can see the, the issues in, on, the, on the immigration on the Mexican border. So I, I hope immigration and police will, will handle the matter. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. They should take it up seriously because the allegations that they are connected, they could be connected with those Rijambias in the region. So when they are talking about that, they can cause atrocities, run away, yet they have ideas, they are living in the, in the same area. This is something that you should take it up after. No, this is a multi, a, a multi agency, security agency concern. We are going to look at it together with the, the different security agencies, and then we shall address ourselves the problem. But this matter, can best be solved with the cooperation of the, of the local leadership. Then who is going to meet the costs? Or oh, we are appealing. Uh, <clears throat> the NGOs which were suspended, mark you, the word is suspend, and uh, the honorable gentleman here was complaining that we are using the last stick for the, you know, because there is a difference between suspending and terminating. Suspending is part of warning. You say, ah, these people were not warned. Yes, when you are suspended, you are warned. Otherwise, your uh, license is, uh, is is terminated. When your license is terminated, that's the final act. The of, 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 removing you as an NGO. But when you are suspended, it means it's the, the then last warning. You are suspended in order for you to get opportunity to rectify what is wrong with your papers or your processes. And when you reply, then you reapply to be, to be re reinstated. Suspension is not termination. That should be understood. As for the case which was lost, we have to look into its merits. Because uh, each case has its own merits and demerits. We shall look into them. If uh, we should accept the defeat, that's okay. If we should appeal, then we shall appeal the case. Or if it is amending the law, like you said, uh, that you organized nice parliament and there were gaps which you saw and they were resisted, then we shall, we shall, we shall now draw your wisdom and say, ah, you say, I, I told you, you didn't listen to me, but now you can see the chicken have come to roost. So we shall draw your wisdom to reinstate that, to fill that uh, missing gap. I thank you. It's mandated to oversee all angel operations in this country. We register them, we inspect them, we monitor them, and we coordinate our activities. And um, this particular committee where the deputy chair was strongly helped us in putting the law together because by 2015, we actually worked closely together. I want to clearly state that uh, government as a whole appreciates the complementary role that angels play. 
And uh, what is happening now is a kind of misconception that is being put out there because the number of organizations that are making it sound as if either government through NGO Bureau is witch hunting some NGOs or else is trying to discriminate. But I want to really set the record straight. In addition to what the minister stated, we did not deregister any organization. This was just an action to bring it to their attention and to temporarily tell them, hold as we resolve this. Otherwise, we appreciate the complementary role and it was never intended to revoke anyone. But in addition to that also, the NGO sector in this country has a very comprehensive regulatory framework. It has an NGO policy 2010, it has the NGO Act 2016, it has the regulations 2017, and all these regulatory framework bring out very clear legal obligations that they are supposed to comply with. Now, the suspension of these organizations arose from, from a, whole, a whole direction that this country has taken to streamline the operations of all angels in this country. All of us are aware that in 2019, between 8th August and 7th September, we had a verification and validation exercise of all angels in this country, where we actually carried out a census to get to know which angels are out there operating. Now, that exercise saw us see a situation where our register was telling us that there were 14,207 NGOs, but when we carried out the initial internal exercise to verify the validity of their permits, we found 